Thank you. Good to be here with everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> okay, so for my contribution today to Ecozoic Futures, I'll make the case for energy commons. We understand it's dangerous to uncritically adopt the same perspective on energy as we've, we've been accustomed to through the era of fossil fuels, namely the commodification of energy, which for renewable energies enables concentration and accumulation of land and technologies and ensures that development proceeds according to logics of financialization, extraction, and profit rather than serving genuine human and non-human needs. What might be considered as global commons are in practice approach as open access regimes, inspiring new modes of enclosure in terms of rights to wind and sunlight. In this context, renewable energy risks reproducing the social ecological harms of existing energy systems while resulting in energy addition rather than transition. Energy as a commons offers a repurposing of energy systems toward mutual aid and sharing. And by energy commons, we're referring to shared flows of energy for all living beings existing prior to and outside of conventional systems of property. Elements of an energy commons would include a biophysical process like sunshine and wind, a community of people responsible for accessing and sharing this process, the value created through these, the relationships among people in place, and the collective rules used to govern these relationships and ensure their reproduction. I'm interested in understanding what can be learned from practices of energy commoning and resistance to enclosure, how this knowledge and experience can help to reimagine energy futures, and what institutions are available now that might provide a bridge to ecozoic energies. Fortunately, we can find many examples of institutions for energy commons in the way of diverse community-based and collectively organized renewable energy systems. These would include cooperatives, municipal utilities, micro and mini grids, and also importantly, reforms of land, ownership, and constitutional rules. And following Ostrom's work, I also find a set of design principles useful for creating the conditions necessary for these institutions to endure generation after generation. So which of these design principles are most critical now? Both research and experience suggest an important insight that the actual tragedy is less about misuse or failure of the commons and more about the regularity and brutality of enclosures. So for more, I invite you to join me at the table and we'll together examine the possibilities for energy commons. Thank you. <laughs>